Hi, everybody. So uh, I already have a video about the best books on teaching and learning about automatic control systems. Uh, I recorded that about a year earlier. Uh, so I'm going to make another a new video about one specific book that I use the most when I'm teaching. is the classic uh, Control Systems Engineering by Norman Nies. I think it's pronounced Nies, not Nisa. So it's Norman Nies. Uh, it's a very, very classic uh, book. I think it's one of the most commonly used books. And uh, I have here the seventh edition. I think now it has progressed towards the eighth or even ninth edition, but we don't have it here in Greece. And uh, this automatic control systems book is the one that I'm, that I'm using the most when I'm teaching automatic control systems. There are other options, of course, as I mentioned in another video, in the previous video. And uh, we have the classic book by Dorfman Bishop, this one, uh, that uh, modern control systems. And I also have the 11th and the 14th edition here in Greece. These are these two editions right here. Uh, of course, both of them are ridiculously huge books. And the same holds, of course, for the book by Norman and Nice. So all of these three books are like, uh, you know, Bible sizes. Uh, they're very, very, very huge. And this is a good thing because they cover extensively the topic of automatic control systems. Now, uh, if you're watching the video and either you're a student or you're a young teacher like me, like when I was when I started, you know, and you are thinking about what to choose. As you know, uh, basically, control systems have two big categories, classic control theory and modern control theory. Classic control works mostly through uh, transfer functions. Uh, so we have uh, Bowden nyquist diagrams, we have uh, root locus diagrams, we have everything that has to do with transfer functions, while modern control uh, works mostly through state space systems. Okay. Now, all of these uh, books, I believe, are mostly uh, better for using in classic control theory courses. So using through transfer functions. They also cover uh, modern control theory. So this book here by Nice has actually a couple of chapters dedicated to state space systems. Uh, but if you want to teach purely modern control theory, purely state space, I think there are a, a couple of other better books uh, to do it. If you want to go strictly. Uh, state space theory. Okay, I'm going to make probably another video about them. So here, I think this book is a much better choice, uh, at least from my perspective, compared to Dorf and Bishop book. Uh, okay, both are very good choices, but I prefer this one. Uh, not only let me tell you, uh, I'm not an engineer, I'm a mathematician. My undergraduate degree was in mathematics, and I like this book better uh, as a mathematician. One of the main reasons that I like it better is that I believe this book uh, regarding signal flow diagrams, it has one very big chapter dedicated to it, which doesn't happen in the Dorf Bishop book. It also, uh, you know, covers simplifying multiple uh, diagrams, etc., but it's not uh, on a very few pages at the start of the book, while here it is a specific chapter dedicated to simplifying uh, complex signal flow diagrams. Okay, so I believe it covers it uh, in a better way, and it is a very fundamental, of course, property in automatic control. So let me tell you a little bit about the uh, material, the contents of the book. Of course, I'm going to put it in the description. So as with all books on automatic control, it starts with a very, very big introduction that covers a lot of the history behind, behind automatic control, uh, some basics. So this is a very, very good introduction to get you really into uh, the whole uh, theory and the whole understanding of a control system. Okay. Uh, then it starts with analyzing on the frequency domain, which mainly discusses transfer functions, solving few through the use of the Laplace transform. Okay, and it gives some example of mechanical systems, uh, of electrical systems, of circuits. It also gives example of, about nonlinear systems and so on. Then it goes to chapter three, which is about state space systems. Now, as I told you, uh, this book is not the best choice if you're going to go full force on state space systems. But if you want to understand the basics of state space systems, it's a perfect book. Perfect book, really. It explains everything very nicely. Then it uh, chapter four has a you know a time response, so it talks again about solving systems. And as of course with other books, it has a dedicated section on first order systems and second order systems and higher order systems and how you can potentially approach higher order systems through a lower order system. And again, it is very very analytical. Then chapter five is the one I talked about. It has about it talks about signal flow graphs and how we can multiply uh, complex subsystems that we have described through a signal flow uh, diagram. Chapter six talks about uh, some sort of stability. So we have the very very classic and very well known uh, Ruth uh, criterion. Then 
Chapter 7 talks about steady state errors. St chapter 8 talks about the root locus technique, uh, the root locus, so it explains how we can design the root locus and how we can use it for stability reasons. Chapter 9 uh, talks about designing controllers through the root locus. So this is the first introduction uh, about P, PI, and PID controllers and lead lag controllers. Then in chapter 10, it talks about analysis through the frequency domains. We have body and Nyquist diagrams. As of course, you know, Bode and Nyquist, I think, are the, the... This is where we go into the really, really hard part uh, of the material, of the syllabus, because Nyquist and Bode are very hard to understand. Uh, if you're an undergraduate student, I'm sure you have devoted a lot of hours into learning about Bode and Nyquist diagrams. I think they are very well explained here. And then, of course, in chapter 11, it talks about a little bit about designing controllers to uh, these diagrams. And then chapter 12 is another advanced chapter. It talks about designing using, uh, using I'm sorry, state space systems. So it goes back into the basics of the state space theory, like controllability, observability, uh, reachability, and uh, observer design, which are, of course, very, very classic notions uh, in, uh, state state, uh, in state space theory. Okay. And then it has another final uh, advanced chapter about digital control systems. It goes about, it, it talks about the Z transform and stuff like that. Of course, this is a very, very short uh, chapter. Again, if you want to go and uh, have a full course on digital control systems, you need to go to pick another uh, book, okay? So this is just an additional chapter. Of course, this book is extremely big. I think when I'm teaching automatic controls in undergraduate, the syllabus is about the first half of the book, so about uh, three, 400 pages. Of course, this sounds like a lot, 500 pages in, a, in an undergraduate course, but you need to remember this book has a very big introduction. Uh, so we only cover it in just a few hours of course of teaching. It also has a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of exercises, which is very, very good, of course, if you want to learn. And it also it has some material dedicated to MATLAB. So again, uh, the material on MATLAB is introductory, but it's the best choice, again, for learning the basics for MATLAB through uh, analysis for uh, control systems. Because as you know, MATLAB has many built-in functions for plotting trust and functions, uh, you know, step impulse responses, uh, non-linear systems through simulant, for example. So it has a lot of basic stuff. And this book is good for learning all the basic stuff in MATLAB. Okay. So I think it is the best choice because it is very, very well organized. Okay, the syllabus, uh, you know, the knowledge is built up sequentially very, very nicely. So even if you're studying as an undergraduate or maybe uh, an early master or an early PhD student, it is a great source. I remember when I started my PhD uh, many, many years ago, I took this book and I started reading it, you know, uh, just uh, as a side note, you know, from other my, you know, I had my specialized uh, papers that I had to read, but I also started reading this book to learn some general uh, knowledge on automatic control. So. To do this, this is a perfect choice. I strongly advise you to use it if you're an undergraduate or an early graduate student over the other books. Of course, you may have your own opinion. Uh, as I told you, I'm seeing this from a mathematics perspective, non, uh, not an engineering perspective. So, you know, overall, a great book, very good coverage of the whole syllabus of automatic control, a great many uh, examples. I mean, it has probably more than 100 plus, maybe 200 solved examples here. So it's a very, very analytical book. Okay, great choice, great examples, great theory. And, uh, you know, of course, you can have your own opinion. But I also think uh, it's uh, there are other editions in English, which I don't have at the moment. I hope to buy in the future. So, of course, if you have your own feedback on this book, you can write it in the comments and we can continue the discussion there. Okay, so thank you very much.